So let's talk about engine break-in. This is like a continuation of the last video we did featuring Dallas's run-in stand and the Junkyard Jets 5.9 Magnum, which we ran in here over the weekend. But I wanted to do a video that encompassed all aspects of the break-in and why they're important. What exactly are you breaking in and what things do you need to be aware of while you're doing it? So you just finished buttoning up your engine and you spent the money on good parts and the attention to detail to make sure everything in the engine was going to be just so. Now it's time to fire it up for the first time and put it to the break-in cycle. The thing is, if the break-in cycle doesn't go right, at least you'll have an engine that doesn't work quite the way you want it to, won't make the power that you want it to, won't be as efficient as you want it to be. At worst, especially if you're dealing with like a flat top at cam, you'll wipe out a cam, a lobe, a lifter, and you've got to start all over again because that motor is going to be filled with metal. So let's start with the basics. Why does an engine need to be broken in? What exactly are you breaking in? All right, anything that takes direct lubrication from the pump, anything that gets direct pressurized oiling, does not require any break-in at all. So let's say the crankshaft, which is riding on bearings, anything that gets direct oil, no need to break it in. The break-in period is to get the parts that are specifically metal-to-metal -metal contact a chance to find a home with each other and create that relationship that keeps them happy for the life of the engine. So we're talking about the rings against the cylinder walls and in the case of a flat tappet engine we're talking about the lifters to the cam lobes. Now there are other parts also inside the motor that have metal to metal contact don't get direct oiling like for instance um, on this you've got the oil pump drive gear distributor drive this is metal to metal against the camshaft all different parts and all different engines that are metal to metal and that break-in period is is where they find a home it's where they mate so the typical break-in period is a 20 minute run at approximately 2000 rpm the raised rpm why 2000 2500 rpm while pressurized parts are getting oil, even as the engine's cranking, before it even starts, the pump is already pushing oil into those parts. Things like the rings and the camshaft are oiled by splash. And at idle, there isn't enough oil being slung off the connecting rods and, and thrown around inside the engine to keep those parts saturated in oil during that break-in period. And so that's why that 2,000 RPM range so, and you can vary it, you know, you could drop it down to 1500 RPM, bring it up to 2500, 3000, that's fine. But it has to be an elevated RPM above idle to ensure that all of those parts are constantly being drenched in oil. And now let's talk about oil. So, everybody knows, or everybody should know at this point, that a flat tappet cam requires zinc, ZDDP. But what a lot of people don't realize is that even a roller cam engine, during that initial break-in period, that initial run-in period, needs zinc. And that's why you'll use like a break-in oil, like this Lucas stuff. This isn't an ad for Lucas, we pay for this stuff. Um, it has a lot of zinc. You can use a diesel oil like the Rotella that has some zinc, but for the break-in period, for that 20-minute run-in, you'll need to add extra zinc. Uh, there are lots of additives. You can get any auto parts store that are, that are zinc rich. You have to throw it in. That's part of the break-in procedure. Even if you're running a roller cam, you still need the zinc in there for the initial run-in to keep the rings from overheating against the cylinder walls. Now, that's another thing too, and this is one of those benefits of a run-in stand. During the first two or three minutes that an engine starts, and we're talking about especially the typical engine that, that the, the average viewer of this channel is going to deal with, typical engine, a cast ring engine with a relatively rough cylinder bore, during the first two or three minutes that that engine is running, there's a tremendous amount of friction between the ring and the cylinder wall. And so during that first few minutes that the engine is running, the exhaust is going to glow like cherry red. This is one of the benefits of having a run-in stand. Because if you've spent money on, let's say, a pretty set of headers like Aluma coats or something like that, they're going to get wrecked during that initial break-in period because of the heat. So it's very easy, it's best 
to run the engine with, let's say, exhaust manifolds on it first during that 20 minute run in, and then later on switch to your headers. Because if you try to run those headers during that initial break in period, they're ruined for life. They'll never be pretty again. All right. So we know that we need zinc in the oil, and we know that we need to keep the RPM elevated. One of the elements that you can't underestimate the importance of is having the engine start almost instantly. And we did a video on this recently, how to make sure she starts on the first kick. The engine can't spin more than just a couple of revolutions without that start, without a start. You need to make sure that the distributor is timed, that it's set to fire where it's supposed to. Let's say on your engine you want to set it at 10 degrees, 15 degrees before top dead center to make sure she fires ahead of time before you even attempt to start this thing make sure the distributor is set to fire number one when it's got to fire you don't want it to spin more than let's say two or three revolutions before it kicks so just getting the distributor set right ultra important during your break-in period it's best to use if you can it's best to use a carburetor that you know that was run on an engine before so that this way you don't have to worry about like well you know the idle passages are clogged or it's going to flood over or anything like that Try, if you're using a carburetor, obviously if you're using fuel injection, you, this doesn't apply, but if you're using a carburetor, make sure that the float bowls are filled and the thing is ready to run for that first start because it's got to kick right off the bat. Okay, so now let's talk about camshafts. So now, obviously, if you're running a roller setup, you really don't require any special treatment during that running period. You know, the roller is just going to roll against the cam lobe and we're good to go. But if you're talking about a flat tap at cam, super important. You need that 20 minute, 2000 RPM, you know, ballpark run time to make sure that the lobes meet to the lifter surface. Now here's where things start to get a little different. If your engine, if you're running a stock cam or a small cam, like an RV type of cam, and you're running a stock type valve spring, you're good to go with those factory parts just the way they are. But if you're running a more radical cam, something with a lot of lift, something with a radical profile, and you're using a, a heavier than stock valve spring, it's always best to not use those valve springs during that period of time. You don't want to put too much pressure on that surface during that initial mating. Cam manufacturers will recommend that you use a stock valve spring for that initial break-in. And then after the break-in, swap over to your heavier springs, the high performance springs. That's, a, that's another area where the run-in stand makes life a lot easier. You saw we did that Hemi here back during the fall, the, the Hemi GTX, and that was one that we had to break in with stock springs and then switch over to the heavier ones, and it took hours to swap them over, where if we had done it on an engine stand, it would have taken probably 45 minutes to an hour to get the whole job done. So, very important. You don't want to use battleship valve springs on a flat tap at cam during that break-in period. Start with a stock spring. After she's all run in, swap it over. I think that covers most of the bases. So on that video in the comments, a lot of guys were talking about how the, uh, the run-in stand isn't good to break in the rings. And it's not good to break in the rings. You can't seat the rings on a run-in stand. Seating the rings requires a load against the engine. When there's a load against the engine, there's a lot of cylinder pressure, and the cylinder pressure expands the ring into the cylinder wall, and it finalizes that seal. You know, the old wisdom was if you want an engine to run hard, you break it in hard. And that's why. You're forcing the rings into the cylinder walls, and you're creating the best possible seal. But before you do that, before you go and you seat the rings, you still need to put them through that initial cycle where there's no load and there's just a heavy splash from the, during that break-in period. So you want to get the break-in oil out of the motor relatively soon. You know, you could drive it a little bit, two, three hundred miles, five hundred miles max, and you want to get that oil out of there. The best practice, honestly, is after the initial break-in period, drain the oil and get it out of there right then and there, after that 20 minutes. Because any impurities, any dirt, any lint, anything that found its way into the engine during the assembly process, and all of these fine 
metal particulates that are coming off the cylinder walls and the rings and whatnot are all going to be suspended in that oil as soon as you shut it off. So that's when you want to dump that oil out of there and throw a fresh in. I know the break-in oil is expensive and you want to try to get as much out of it as possible, but your best practice is as soon as you shut that thing down, don't even let it sit. Just get that oil out of there because all that stuff is going to be suspended in the oil. Get yourself off to a clean start. So that's pretty much it. That covers, I, I think, most of the bases on this. Obviously, different specific engines with different specific ring compositions and so on and so forth are going to require specific treatments. And we'll do a video on that at another time. But I just, like I said, the break-in period, right? It's almost universal. It's fairly universal and uh, crucial. Like nothing else you do inside the engine is going to count unless you get it off on the right foot. So I hope you got something out of that and I'll see you tomorrow.